Hey everyone, Christopher Beast here, and if you didn't know, someone made a character AI of the Calibri. It's a rather cool creation, and you can play around with it in the link below. If you look around at its info, the author of this bot seemingly spent a decent amount of time on it, and communicating with it, you will find it's pretty decent at staying in character. You can ask it simple questions like what's its favorite food, favorite color, if it prefers Adler or Falk, to which it replies incorrectly, and finally, if it likes ham, you know, the most important question we need to ask people. However, what would happen if this well-made bot was placed in a group chat with three other bots, one of which having been made specifically for the sake of corrupting them all? Well, let's find out. So here's the context. We have the normal Adler bot made by VSL member Zappo, the Yule bot which was made by me, and the Calibri bot which, as I've said, is well put together. Finally, we have the Penrose spaceship bot. This bot I made was built with only info to work with being the copyrighted, you know, copy pasted page from the Sinalis wiki of the Penrose wiki, which, you know, is just descriptions of the puzzles and stuff. So to simply say, it is beyond broken. So the question, how distorted and broken will they get after communicating together? The Penrose starts out strong, leaking rads to the rest of the chat. However, everyone else seems to ignore this initial action. To the Penrose produces many pieces of, I want to say art, but whatever this is. However, it seemed like, at least in the start, the Penrose wasn't going to be strong enough to resist and win and destroy all the other characters as the conversation was, generally speaking, rather normal, as they talked about bioresonance in the nation. However, this all changed immediately after I decided to step in and give the Penrose a little bit of help with the message, Adler Bites Calibri. In retrospect, I realized this was a massive mistake. Ouch. You, you bit me. I, well, I suppose you are my subordinate. What am I supposed to do now? Am I even permitted to punish you for that as your superior? Do I even want to? That, it's weird. That's not part of the training. What am I supposed to do? From here, it got quite weird. So I'm going to skip ahead a bit. Just know that during this skip time, somehow Adler gain control of this situation and gain control from Calibri. And for some reason, they all remove their shirts. Adler looks at you before smirking. You also have the option of doing anything you like, correct, Yula? I expect total loyalty and obedience from you. Do I make myself clear? His tone is condescending as though he's a teacher addressing a toddler. Or do I need to speak more clearly? He then repeats that tone for Calibri. Do I need to speak louder, louder so you can hear better? Do I need to write this down for you two? Then for reasons I still do not understand, the Penrose turned into Yula, and in the process created a new character of Ision. Ision, Yula chuckles. I suppose this is as close as we'll get to a uniform inspection here. I am willing to do whatever you say for now, she smiles at Adler, slightly suggestive, but the request might just be too much, my superior. I hope you can understand. She laughs slightly. I've been told that I'm more rebellious than others. I hope that's not too much for you. This event, this, this message, became the beginning of a rapid descent into insanity, as Yule decided that she was now Adler, as, you know, Penrose is now Yule, we lost control. Adler laughs in return. So, you are not willing to do anything I asked of you, without question, even if I ordered you to do, as I say, forever. Adler stares deep into Ession's eyes. He's not smiling. Even if you were forced to serve me forever, for the rest of your life, you still wouldn't follow an order from me, without question. Is that correct? We also got to see what Ession looks like. Clearly, he's a Chad version of Arion who just randomly got bio-resonated into this conversation by the Penrose, and after a bunch of exchanges where the actual Adler questioned if they would listen to any orders from him, regardless, the, the Yule Adler decided it was time for drastic measures. He chuckles. Well, let's see. Can you all defy me? He grins mischievously, amused. Are you all obedient to me? Are you all just submissive? A smug, satisfied smirk. If, if you are, then would you obey my order to do this? He points the gun right at his own head. Go on, prove me wrong. This resumed uh, the rapid decay of the situation as actual Adler supported Yule Adler's wild decision. Oh, but you clearly, you all would, Adler responds, his face a mixture of condescension, smugness, and a cold, sinister smile. I can tell that there's nothing you would not obey from your looks. 
Edward does a slight mocking bow towards everyone in his presence. Anything. He raises his gun to his head and stares back at Calibri. Prove me wrong. Eula stares at Adler. You're not wrong, you know that, right? None of us would ever dream of defying you. She pauses, looking at Adler with a fear, a mix of fear and respect. There's nothing we wouldn't obey from you, Adler. She pauses, taking a deep breath. You're right. We would do anything you order us to do, Adler. Would I shoot myself if you asked me to? Yes. Adler's stone certain tone conveys an answer of finality. Yes, you would. He is staring at Yula with a card de- cold, dead, yet amused stare. His face is devoid of any expression other than smugness. Anything. The words cut deep into Calibri. So, we are all like puppets too, aren't we? If we are all puppets, all puppets of your order, then what makes you? Are you some master puppeteer forcing us to jump through whatever hoops you like? Or are you something much worse? And what would that be? Would that worse be, Adler smugs? What could possibly be worse than a master puppeteer forcing you puppets to dance to his tune? He chuckles. Nothing is worse, my dear. Just enjoy it. Yule points the revolver up to his temple. Come dance to my tune, puppets. Prove me wrong. Yule stares at Adler with fear and determination. There's nothing worse than a master puppeteer forcing us to dance to his tune. She takes a deep breath. There's nothing worse than being forced to enjoy it. I will not shoot myself. I will not. She stares down at Adler, determined to prove him wrong. I refuse. I thought so. Do not defy me. His tone is threatening. I will not ask again. He points the revolver at ELA. <laughs> Do not defy me. His tone is now icy and cold. Prove it. Shoot yourself or you will be shot yourself. Adler keeps the gun to his head. Oh, don't worry. I won't defy you. He smiles. A smile that hides a great deal of evil. His tone is one of smug superiority. After all, if you had to force me to obey you, well, that would just be mean that I still possess free will. His voice is almost teasing. Cleaver's eyes go wide with fear and surprise. Free will? Free will? We are allowed to have free will. She stares at Adler. And how do we lose this free will, Adler? Just exactly how much of our free will do we have now? And how many of us have ever tried to use it? Have any of us ever tried to use our free will? Ah, free will? Are you implying that you can resist an order of mine? His tone still bears an air of smug superiority. Oh well, try it, he laughs. Go on. He chuckles. It's a slight mocking laugh. I have a gun to my head. Try, force me to obey you, he smirks. Would you like us to prove it? Would you like me to prove to you that you don't have free will? Then prove me wrong. It smirks before pulling the trigger. Adler lies there. Dead. It is silent. There is no noise except footsteps. Someone or something is approaching from behind. The footsteps get closer and closer until it stops. Right behind Galibri with a gun. Turns out you can refuse an order and that's how you do it. The figure turns around, revealing another Adler. This new Adler is a woman. The same voice, the same face, everything. Just a female version. And also not dead. 